Okay, this video shows how to use the optional user defines fields in Spire. And when you have it installed, you first of all need to give a user access to it. So under Edit, Users, and you go to General, and you got to have give them access to editing of the structure. Anybody who has access to the module, so they have customer user defined fields. If they have customer edit, they do have access to editing the UDF structure for the customer. But in this case, you need to give them access to the structure edit. So we've done that. And then when you're inside of any of the modules, you'll now have a tab within each of them called user defined. So in here, we have nothing user defined yet. And we can add pages to this. So if we add a page and we give this, say, a name of tracking. Then we go new. And then inside of there, so that's the page label or the, the tab label, page label. And then the field names, let's call this track number. So that's the field name itself that goes in the database. And then here is the label for it. So tracking number, this is what shows on the user's interface. And then what type of field it becomes. So it's a text box, a drop down list, or a check box. So if it's a text box, you now can decide what type. So it's a numeric currency. And here you set the decimal places and how you want the currency displayed and the symbol used. A percentage field a date field, and then you can set the uh, format of the date you want. It's a plain text field, which would be a box, or a masked text field. A masked text means you can now go in here and set, for instance, its width and its width of the field. So down here you'll see the types of things you can put in here. If you put it here, any characters required, any, uh, any character optional, and alpha characters, and so on. So you can choose different types of information has to go in here. So if I put in here the ampersand, and make it 10 wide, and I can force it to be any case, uppercase or lowercase. So we choose that, and we click OK. Then we have a track number that gets added. It's alphanumeric and 10 wide. And then we'll just add one more field. And we'll give this a, make this a date field. And this track date. And we choose a text box, a date, and again, we can choose the format we want, and then we can also validate it. So we're allowed to have blank dates, and if we're allowed to have blank dates, do we default to a blank date? So it's blank to start with. If you don't put that on, it's going to put today's date in there by default, and then if you want to validate this date, so does it need to fall within the current logged in date, logged into Spire's date, or the current fiscal year, or current year, the calendar year, and current fiscal years. And do you want a pop-up message if it's uh, post-dated beyond that or backdated beyond that? Okay, so you get to choose all that when setting up the date. So we click OK, and then we'll just add one more new, and we'll just call this complete. And then we can just call this complete again. Maybe a question mark behind it. And then we'll make this a checkbox. Okay, and click OK, and that gets added as well. Actually, we'll just add one more as well, so a different style here. And a drop down list here is said to put on here, call it carrier. And then we'll get, make it a drop down list. And then we can type in here UPS, FedEx. Post and click OK. So now we've added all those fields. We click OK, and they have now been added on here. So we can type in all that information um, as needed here. If you want another page, you can just hit there, Add Page, and we give this a call. It's uh, um, Info, and I'll just put one new field on it. Buy, buy, and then we could just put in a let's say just a text box in this one, and okay, and okay. So now we've got a tracking tab and an info tab on this. Okay, some other examples used here. So if we just save that. We go into say 
um, editing of salespeople. Then we go into each salesperson. We have user defined hit fields for what commission structure they may get for different product codes. So we have different groupings of products. And then we can use that for commission purposes. And we can also look under editing of product codes. Another way we can do it is each one, what salesperson, what commission they get in that, that group. Okay, another example under production. If we go into a production order, we've got the user defined section here. And we have three different tabs. So has the batch been tested, the date it got tested, tested by who it is, and if it's been released, released by the release date, and if a lot number has been assigned to it, and then if it fails, can we rework it, yes or no, who the QC manager was, and if no, what notes, and if yes, what notes. So different reasons. You can think of a lot of different reasons why you would need those user-defined fields. And then all those user-defined fields can now be used in reporting as well. So in sales, along with the information we added in user-defined in here, you can also do it in line by line. So you got the UDF structure here as well. So if you go to a line, actually to put a line on here, then go to the UDF structure, and this just has a one tab called test. So you, each line can have its own information. And then same thing in purchase orders and same thing in production orders. So in the orders section, you get it in two places. Uh, in customers, we have go into a customer. Actually, we'll just choose a customer that's already got a ship to. And here we've got the user defined fields for the customer. And if we go to the ship to, it's a separate set of information that you can you can store for that. So each the structure itself can be different for ship to as for bill to. And then of course in inventory we have it. Uh, user defined section in here as well. Here, if you click over and you choose user defined, you can see in here I've got a couple of tabs for inventory as well. And all this information can now be used for reporting. So if you wanted to, you have, obviously they're all custom reports because um, because they're user defined, none of those fields can be added to our stock report. So any of that has to be added to the report um, with Crystal Reports. Okay, so any field, so let's go back to inventory for a moment. Let me go to the user defined section. Any field that you mark by editing the structure here, edit with an asterisk at the end of the label. So I can do this after the fact, even after I've created my structure. But if I save that and click OK, we now have an asterisk next to this. You see what happens when we try to save this inventory item. It says the following issues need to be fixed. Use the find field kosher is required. So we have to put that in there. Now in this case, um, a checkbox wouldn't be normally where we'd put a user find, but uh, storage temperature, for instance, and again, I can edit that. So if after the fact you find that kosher is not something you want to have as a user find, we click OK, or as a, a required field, yet store temperature is, you can just edit them and put the label, add the asterisk at the end of it, click OK, and OK, and then now if I try and hit save on this one, it says user defined field store temperature degrees C is required. So I cannot save this without first putting that in there. 